Well, I'm sure you've heard all of the, the various recommendations and on why and how you can, you know, read more books and read much faster and read much quicker, speed read. Um, there's been so much said and, and published, publicized about, you know, read a book a day, read a book a week, read two books a day, read two books a week. And what I'd like to share with you is what I genuinely um, believe is a perhaps a better way of um, accumulating the right level of wisdom and knowledge that is necessary for your dreams and goals. Um, I am one of those people who I believe I have a passion and an interest in reading. I believe it's such a great opportunity and a great experience that anyone can can choose to 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 have. The the ability to learn in in four or five hours by reading one book, what took someone else 30, 40 years to acquire, I think it's just profound. I believe it's one of the best gifts ever given to people. Um, the transference of wisdom and knowledge and understanding, um, the capturing of experiences and moments, failures, successes, um, true written words, and using those words to paint a picture of hope, inspiration, motivation, encouragement, insight, and in many cases also, they serve as warnings. And to capture that in a, in a book, to capture that in a form, to capture that in such a way that the people who are then privileged to invest the time and are privileged and are happy to um, follow the recommendations are given an opportunity to make a difference in their life. I think that is great. You know, I believe that one of the greatest treasures of life and the greatest legacies anyone can live is um, is words, the words that you live in people's hearts and people's minds and people's conscience. Um, I believe that is perhaps the greatest of um, investments anyone can make. Now, it's like a double-edged sword as well, because words have life. The right words create the right experiences and create the right feelings, and the wrong words do the opposite. And I love reading. And what I'm about to share with you is something that goes against what I do, in a, in a way, in some parts, not in every way. You know, I'm a believer in reading because I believe that the wisdom of the world is, is uh, at any time, where you might find yourself. You know, within a few miles from where you are, within a few hundred yards from where you are, there is a book, and that book could contain the secret key that unlocks uh, a particular door in the mansion of your life that connects all the dots that makes life um, worth living. And the only way you can find out what those treasures are is when you go looking. And so I encourage people to read as much as they can. And I've read a number of books and I've read um, for a number of years and I've come to the conclusion that it's better to read um, much rather than many and what i mean by that is simply we've heard all of the recommendations read a book a day read two books books a week um, read a book a week so that in a year if you read a book a week then in, in at the end of the year you would have read 52 books that is great yes and you know reading 52 books in a year it means in 10 years you've read more than 500 books which would make you, you know, more of an expert in a particular genre or, or area of interest, depending on how much of your time you dedicated to reading and focusing on the lessons from that particular book or particular um, subject area. But what I've realized is that when you read, and what I'm sharing with you, let me explain it in this way. This might even perhaps make it a little bit more understandable. If a hundred people watch this video I'm giving now, random people, a hundred random people watch this video, within 24 hours, 
within 24 hours, 25% of those who have seen this video will forget everything I've said. Within 24 hours. Now within 48 hours, 50% of those who are listening to this video right now will forget everything I said. In a week, within a week, 80% will forget what I said. And interestingly, within four weeks, 98% or 99% of those who heard what I said will forget everything that I said. So this goes a long way to suggest that in many cases, it's not what you, what you read. It's, it has more to do with the repetition, and I'll come to that in a, in a second. You see, space repetition, like they say, is the mother of all skill, um, and that is true. And space repetition is also the mother of all change. If you want to change your life, you must change your thoughts. And if you think about the fact that your thoughts have been um, reaffirmed for such a long time, that some of them have become beliefs. And just by listening to a, you know, a video like this or by reading one book, it doesn't make a difference in your life. For you to get to a point where the knowledge or the wisdom contained in the book is almost um, habitual or instinctive to you, you have to listen and read and listen and read over and over again. And that is the reason why truth, in many cases, doesn't create change. Repetition of what you hear, what you see, what you, what you believe is what creates change. And you can see this in so many kind of walks of life. If you look at um, Adolf Hitler, you know, he, his life was, a, was an evidence to the fact that the truth doesn't always create change. You know, he repeated a lie for so long, so regularly, that the people of Germany believed him. You know, that was simply how he was able to influence the world in such a negative way. So repetition, spaced repetition, is much better than consuming quantity. Now, although I've given you an example that suggests that most of what you hear from what I'm teaching will be barely remembered in four weeks, part of the reason for that is simply that we have about 40 to 50,000 thoughts every single day. And these thoughts are thoughts that are carried over in most cases from the day before, of which, of which out of the 70 or 80% of those thoughts we carry over, almost 90% of those are negative thoughts. So our mind is constantly being bombarded with so much information that to really keep a thought in your mind, you must connect, you must emotionalize it. You must think about it. You must have it regularly being processed and replayed in your mind. Now, reading a book, when you read a book, traditionally when you read a book, you remember about 10% of what you read. When you listen, in some cases, when you listen to a book or an audio material, you remember about 20%. So listening is not just a, a better way of um, retaining what you've, you've heard, but it's also a more flexible approach. Now, if you go back to what I explained before, if 25% forget what I say um, within 24 hours, 50% forget what I say within 48 hours, um, and we have 80% of the people not remembering anything I said within a week, and 98% forgetting everything I've said within four weeks, now consider what those numbers would be like if I was talking about reading. The same principle applies, except for the fact that the numbers I gave you will be in half. You'd have to half the numbers, which means it's a, it's a really, really, um, almost a really sad statistics. That simply says, just consuming content doesn't mean that it will lead to change in your life. So rather than, I would, my encouragement to you would be this. Instead of focusing on perhaps reading one book every day, and at the end of the year you cannot very 
easily articulate what you learned or what you've learned so far, you're better off identifying, in my opinion, this is my opinion, in my opinion, you're better off identifying four books. And those four books or five books, I prefer four, you just Im immerse yourself in those books. Immerse yourself in those books. You know, you read, you study, you underline. You read, you capture thoughts, you capture how you feel, you underline. You go back, you review your notes, you journal. So immerse yourself in just four books. And those four books are books that you can space. Space repetition is how we learn. That's the best way to learn. And one of the ways you do this is simply assuming you have four books. And let's say you are one of those people who loves to read. Now, how do you start? You could simply say, okay, I'll read one book a week. That means if you have four books, you're only getting to read one of those books, each of those books rather, once a month, which means that you're giving yourself a three-week break between reading the first book. Now, you know bet, and just like I do, that there are times when you've read a material, you've read a book, you've seen a film, and... You've seen it for the second time and suddenly you say, well, I can't remember that happening during the first um, experience I had watching or hearing. That is the same way we learned that when you when you start to space repeat, you start to pick up things that you never considered, that you never saw before. So my recommendation to you in 2017 is rather than focusing on reading a lot of books, Read few books and read them more often. And when you read, study each, study them. Always ask yourself a question when you read. You know, what is my outcome? What am I expecting myself to get from this book? And if you read with that point of view and with that in mind, what you find is that your attention to detail increases. And I'll give you a tip for reading, and I hope this helps you. And I hope... Um, you understand what I mean by it, by it. Traditionally, when we read, or when we listen, like now you're listening to me, and this is this applies in the same way to you listening to what I'm sharing with you. Rather than focusing on um, what I'm saying, because it's almost impossible for you to pick every single word I, I give you right now and process it at the same time that I'm speaking it. The best way to read and the best way to listen is whilst you're li reading or listening, you should be attentive to your inner self because your inner self is speaking at the same time as you're reading or you're listening to another person. And what is, it's, it's, it's speaking to you, but it's revealing something. And that is what you want to capture. Don't focus on capturing what the person is saying. There'll be something that is said that resonates with you you would know when that comes true. That might be a reminder about something in your life. It may not be necessarily exactly what the author or what the speaker had said, but it would ignite, it would activate something in you that draws you to something completely different. So that's the best way um, to, to, to read or to listen to a speech, to listen to a, a seminar, to listen in a conference. Listen to yourself. Listen to what the message does to you and listen to the the change in your reaction the change in your body because that is the clue as to where that message will make the most difference in your life i make it make it practical so you can understand what i mean let's say um you're in a in a in a conference and the speaker is talking about a particular uh, level of sacrifice that has to be made to achieve a level of success in perhaps a particular area of an industry. Now, he might make a statement that perhaps makes you feel as though it was being directed towards you, where you feel as though he's been, um, maybe what he said or what she said was a bit tough towards the, all the audience. Now, remember that nothing has any meaning except that which you give it. You know, Shakespeare said um, that there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So when you start 
hearing inside you the voice. That voice might say, well, I don't like this teacher because of what he said. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, why do I feel that way? Because that connects, that connects you straight. You know, questions are very important. That connects you straight to what you should be dealing with. That has been the gifts the speaker has given to you in his message. He may have given a really fascinating or beautiful speech, but he can give the best of speeches and you might feel inspired for the time and go back to your normal state. But any speaker, any teacher, any book, anytime you invest your energy efforts um, and attention to doing something, one of the most important things you must do is listen to your inner self because your inner self is telling you and it's instructing you on what you need to do. So as I summarize, I'll say this to you. In 2017, focus on reading much, but not many.